What did you think was going to happen after you stabbed Peyton? I don't really know. I figured that I'd get in trouble eventually, though. Because, um, Mommy always says that whatever you do catches up to you eventually. And it did. So about halfway during the interview with Morgan, I got up and I took a little break. I went and met with Detective Tressoni and we sort of compared notes. I just remember looking at him going, this is the most unbelievable story I've ever heard. Who's ever heard of two 12-year-old girls planning for six months to kill one of their best friends? We have no idea how difficult it was not to tell anyone. We would all be together. It was a flawless plan, actually. I think they wanted to kill Peyton because they felt Peyton was accessible in that way. You know, they didn't have a lot of friends. She was somebody that they would be able to get to be alone with. Did you ever talk about killing Bella in the bus at the birthday party? We did sometimes, but we made sure we whispered. Granted, the bus was really loud, but a couple of our eavesdroppers we used coverts like for knife. We meant we used cracker and for. But he always, we would use words like itch. There are actually three plans that were devised to kill Peyton. Morgan said that um, at her birthday party, she was the only one that had cracker bell shut, stab her in the neck, and then leave. Morgan was going to put on a set of headphones, connect it to her iPad, and set an alarm to wake her up in the middle of the night like two in the morning. She would wake up Anissa. But we didn't stab her then. We were too sleepy, tired, because we were at Skateland. That was the original plan? Yeah, until it changed. So 5.30 in the morning comes, and they wake up. They get up, start playing with Silly Putty, and uh, playing with her iPad and playing dress up. And while Peyton is putting on a pink princess dress, the two start talking and they start devising plan number two. So he says, hey, we could go to the park and kill her in one of the bathroom stalls. Was Bella around at that time? Uh, yeah, Bella, we were playing dress up and Bella was putting on a costume in the bathroom. It's mind-boggling. How do you one minute want to play like a normal 12-year-old and then switch back to, oh wait, we're going to kill her? We asked if we could go down to the park because we were going to do it down in the bathroom stall and like sit around the toilet. There was a drain for blood to go down. And when did she take the knife? Uh, she took it before we left. Where did she get it from? Her kitchen. So who left the house with it? I think Anissa did. It was in the bag. To me, she was trying to deflect the blame from herself back onto Anissa. But how did you know that she grabbed one? Because she showed it to me as we were walking to the park. Morgan lifts up her jacket and shows Anissa that she's got this knife in her waistband. What were you thinking? I was thinking, dear God, this is really happening. And she told us we had to kill her. Who did? Anissa. There was a lot of deception in Morgan's interview. It seems like Anissa is saying this is what happened. But when you listen to Morgan, she always says, well, I think that Anissa did it. I think this happened. Um, I think Anissa told me to. Anissa might as well. It's sort of foggy, because I've been trying to block it out. They then walk to the park. They go into the bathroom at the park. They're in the bathroom stall, and they're kind of passing the knife back and forth. From what I read on the Cuban Pasha Wiki, it's easy to kill people when they're either asleep or unconscious. And it's also easier if you do not look them in the eyes. Anissa tells me that she actually tries to knock Peyton out. I kind of went like that to her forehead, banged her head up against the uh, concrete. And you were doing this to knock her off so you guys could kill her in there? Yeah. They lose their nerve. They don't kill her at that point. They then go outside. They leave the bathroom. 
and they start to walk through the park. And that's when plan three is devised. I say, hey guys, why don't we go take a walk around the block? That's when I pointed out to Morgan the trees and bushes and all that and say, you can take her in there and do the deed. We led her there and tricked her. How did you trick her to get down there? We said that we were going to go bird watching. People who trust you become very gullible. And it was sort of sad. And once they got closer to the woods, they had suggested that they play a game of hide and seek. They walked deeper and deeper into the woods. And then Morgan said that she would go off and count and that Peyton and Anissa should go hide. She was gonna hide one place, I was gonna hide another, and then Morgan and I were gonna be like lioness who was chasing down the scene road. So I was gonna tackle her, and then Morgan was gonna do the static. Anissa passes the knife back to Morgan. And Morgan's like, all right, I'll do it, only if you tell me when to do it. So I started walking away, and then like when I was five feet away, I said now. I'm like, I'm going go ballistic, go crazy, make sure she's down. I couldn't believe these words were coming out of a 12-year-old's mouth. It's awful. What did you do next? I already told you. What was that? Stab, 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 stab. In all my years of law enforcement, I've never heard anything like this. It's almost as if they are writing their own story. They're living their own creepypasta story. You'd look at that video and say, see, she's bloodless. She's just cold-hearted. She was going to kill. And other people said, oh, she's so clearly disturbed. Do you remember leaving the park to go to the woods? They just wanted to go on a walk. Who could ever see something like this coming? Like, nobody. And you were 12 years old. Exactly, oblivious. They made the wrong turn at each point to the point where it just was out of control. You just have to think about this locomotive that is just going down the tracks and there's no brakes on it. Is it possible that we have that extremely rare thing going on here, which is, well, you just have an evil 12-year-old? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.